Ready to go? Ready. Huh? Huh? Good morning, everybody. Good to see you all out this morning. I heard P.D. Jake say, say a, a very truthful statement this week. He said, people can go down to the local nightclub. He said, they can get beat up. He said, they'll go right back. Somebody will go down to the church, get a little hurt, and they'll never see them again. Yeah. We as human beings are funny creatures. <laughs> Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father and our God, again, we thank you, God, that you've allowed us to come together once again to worship you in your word. God, we thank you for the beautiful day, God, that you have given us today. Father, we're asking again this morning that the Holy Ghost would come to teach us the Holy Word. Father, that it will not return to you void, but it will accomplish what you will. I ask your blessings upon each and every one here. Father, that this Word will go down into their heart, and it will, will do what you want. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. We're in the eighth chapter of Acts this morning. Uh, we got down <coughs> to... Uh, I believe we got down to the 26th verse. So let's begin Acts uh, 8 and 26. But <clears throat> now to back up just a little bit here, Philip, he had been proclaiming the word in Samaria like Jesus said he would in Acts uh, 1 and 8. And of course he'd come up against this man named Simon and wanted to buy the gift of the Holy Ghost, and of course Peter had come down and he told him, you know, uh, your money perish with you. Yeah. As, as I said last week, we've got too many people today, they're trying to buy the gospel with, with money. It just don't work. I mean, it's a gift of God, and God does what he will with it. And so here in verse 26, and said, and the angel of the Lord spake unto Philip, saying, Arise and go toward the south unto the way that goeth down from Jerusalem uh, unto Gaza, which is desert. Now, this place, Gaza, it was three miles inland from the Mediterranean Sea. It was a Philistine city in the Old Testament. See, uh, good to see you this morning. You know, uh, <clears throat> Here we have Philip. He was he was having great services here in Samaria. God says, "You're needed over here." We need to be careful whenever we leave a, leave somewhere. We need to be sure God was the one that told us to go. There's been a lot of people that have left churches that God said God let, told me to leave, you know, and all it, all it was. They just didn't like what was going on. They was not in tune with the Spirit in a lot of cases. They just didn't. And so, uh, so Philip goes down and he said, and, and he arose and went, and behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen of Ethiopians, who had the charge of all her treasures and had come to Jerusalem for to worship. Now, <clears throat> Ethiopia, that's Cush, that's uh, south of Egypt in the region of Neb Nebia. <clears throat> but it said he was a, a eunuch that had come to, to Jerusalem to worship. I want to look at uh, Deuteronomy 23, just a moment, 23.1. You know, uh, the, in this chapter, it's person, the people that are excluded from the congregation of the Lord. Verse 23, 1 said, He that is wounded in the stones or hath his private member cut off shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. In other words, they had to, he had to be a whole man. A eunuch, we know, was a castrated male. But, there's another meaning for the for the word eunuch here. 
the state officer, and I personally, I believe that's what he was. I don't think he. I don't think the man was actually a a unit. I think he was. He was the officer of Candace the Queen. Now that, that word Candace, that that is a title. It's not her name. It's like like Pharaoh and all, all these others that we've had in the past year. But <clears throat> God had, had, has actually a blessing for a eunuch in Isaiah 56. Give me just a moment's time. Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56, verses 3 through 5. Neither let the son of the stranger that hath joined himself to the Lord speak, saying, The Lord hath utterly separated me from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus saith the Lord unto the eunuchs that keep my Sabbath and choose the things that please me and take hold of, of my covenant. For even unto them will I give in my house and within thy, my walls a place and a name better than of the sons and of the daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. The point I'd like to make right here, I don't care what condition you're in, if you're truly seeking God, God's got a place for you. People may try to cut you off. People may say, well, you're not fit for this or fit for that. But God's got a place for you if, you, if your heart is right with God. Oh. It, it really, really bothers me when a denomination declares who is, who is able to, to proclaim the gospel and who can't. Because, you see, the Bible is plain on this. This is a whosoever will gospel. You know, qualification, you got... You know, here's the thing about it. God generally uses the people that we would consider unfit. I mean, you know, in our little mind. You take somebody that we think, well, they're, they're really a spiritual thing, a man or a woman or whatever, you know, watch them. If you'll watch them for a little while, you'll find out most of the time they're not what you think they are. I've, I've watched a few of them. You know, you, let's take, you know, uh, uh, some some big ministries. They've all fallen. Why? Because the man or the woman or whoever was over, over it, they get in their head, as Paul said, you know, don't think of yourself some more, than, more highly than you ought to think. When you get to thinking of yourself more highly than you ought to think, you're headed for a disaster. In verse eight, verse twenty-eight. He said he had come to he had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning, sitting in his chariot, and read Isaiah, the prophet. Now, this chariot that this man was riding in was not like a a war chariot. It was more like. Uh, it had seats in it. In other words, it would be what we would call to be a limousine, because he had it, he had his own personal driver and everything. Verse twenty nine said, "Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to this chariot." And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah, and said. Understandest thou what thou readest? <clears throat> Verse 31. And he said, How can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. <clears throat> Let's go to, to uh, Romans 10.
Romans 10, 13, and 15. It says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. This is basically what's happening here with the, with Ethiopia. He didn't understand what he was saying, but God sent him, sent him a man to tell him. This is something that I've always found out. If you're really sincere to know the word of God and know the things of God, if God don't reveal it to you through the Spirit, he will send somebody else to tell you, show you what you need. The worst thing you can do in a church or any, anywhere, the worst thing you can do is have a closed mind. When you close your mind, you, you will stay right where it is. It's like, it, it's like you have a, a, a bucket at, and you want to put water on, in, in that bucket. If you've got a lid on that bucket, you're going to put no water in that bucket. And it's the same way with your mind. If your mind is closed, there's nothing else can go in. You're going to go, that's as far as you're going to go. And we've got so many people that have done that, you know, they've listened to Brother Joe or whoever, and, and they have more confidence in him than they have in the Word of God. You know, and what is really going to happen it's going to lead them to destruction in a lot of cases, you know. <clears throat> 32 said, the place of the scripture which, which he read was this, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and like a lamb dumb before the sheriff, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Who shall declare his generation for his life? is taken from the earth. And he was reading from Isaiah 53, verses 7 and 8. But he said, in verse 33 there, he, he said, in his humiliation, his judgment was taken away. <clears throat> I like the way the part of New Testament put that. It uses the word justice there for judgment. You know. See, Jesus did not, in, in this world's court, Jesus did not receive justice because he wasn't guilty. You know. But it was the plan of God. I understand all that. But, I mean, if we look at it from this world's situation, you know, they had to, they had to bring people in to tell lies on him so they could, could crucify him. And, and that is the same thing that's happening with people today. We, in, 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 as Christians, we are being attacked on the left and on the right today. You know, if I, I, I dare say, before it's over with, we're going to be accused of being the ones that are doing this global warming. You know, they, they bring up all of the foolish and stupid things. You know, I, I heard a fellow... Old, uh, Last night I was listening to a, 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 well he, he was Governor Huckabee, and and he said that the people on the left and in the news media has lost their mind. I mean, when you listen to some of the things they tell you, you can see it. it but you, what people don't understand, it's the spirit that they're under that's guiding them. You know, you. You, you, if you're under a, a religious spirit, you will follow what that re, li, religious spirit tells you and what it teaches. You know, it, it amazes me that you you can hear a man of this denomination and a man over here of this denomination, and they both can be coming from the same verse, but both of them one of they see it totally opposite. You know. Well, the gospel's only one way. They just want one way to interpret the gospel, and that's the way it's written. When it says, Thou shalt not, that means thou shalt not. 
So they'll shout. You know, so, you know. But that, that's what we're trying to do today. People are trying to get rid of God, the Word of God, you know, because it goes against human nature, you know. You know, if you read the Bible, if you if you're out of, if you were in sin and you read the Bible, it can burn you up because it goes against what you're doing and what you believe. No, no, I mean, it's called hate speech right now. If you hear a message uh, that goes against what people believe, it's called hate speech, you know. And I don't, I, I don't know where it's coming in this country. It probably will because it's in other countries already. When you teach the truth of the Word of God, you're subject to go to prison. But the thing about it is, you know, we may suffer a little bit in this lifetime, but this is all the suffering we'll ever know. But those people that are, that are doing the punishment, they've got an eternity of, of suffering. You know, and, and, and this is another thing, you know, uh, we find today. The word hell is just a byword to people. They don't even know, you know, most of them don't even know what they're talking about. You know. It's just a byword. But I'm telling you, that is a place you do not want to be. From my, from my studies and what, I've, what I have seen, it, it is an awful place. So, you were, yeah, this is something else that gets me. You can, you can take somebody out here that's been a pure reprobate. And they get up and they preach it, you know, well, we're going to lay so and so to rest. No, there'll never be no rest for that person if they were a reprobate when they died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, some, I've heard people say there's going to be a big party in hell. No, sir, there'll not be no party in hell. I mean, the pain's going to be so bad. You're going to forget about party. <clears throat> Verse 34 says, And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee, whom speaks this, or the prophet himself, or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. The word preach there in the Greek means to announce good news. <laughs> And they went on their way, and they came to a certain water, and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart that thou mayest. And he answered, He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You see, we, we at people, we have tried to make salvation something real hard. You've got to do this, and you've got to do that. The Bible teaches you all you've got to do is believe in your heart and confess. You know, uh, you know Jesus even went, went this far. He said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny, and deny you before the Father. We, there has got to be a confession made. You know, you know I, I said here Thursday night, some of you weren't here, Ron Carpenter makes this statement this week. He said, where, where your mouth goes, your body goes. I'm telling you, people don't understand the power of words in this community. I, I hear people saying things I wouldn't say in no way. But when you, when you watch their life on down the road, they, they reap what they sow. Verse 38 said, And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. <clears throat> and when they 
were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught, caught away Philip, that the eunuch saw him no more, and he went on his way rejoicing. Now, th this word uh, caught away here, uh, that is the same word uh, that is used in 1 Thessalonians uh, 4.17, you know, that we will be caught away when Jesus comes in the air. You know, so shall we ever be with the Lord, you know. But you know, that, that people will say, well, that type of thing, that, that all happened back in, in, in the Bible, you know, you know, there, and that don't happen anymore. Well, you know, you've, we've all heard Pastor Bill tell about the time that he uh, was on the mountain and, and had the accident, and the preacher was down uh, miles away on the road, and all of a sudden, he was right there with Pastor Bill. He was caught away and caught up there with him. See, people, God can do what God needs to do to us. You know, things, the Bible says, you know, what's impossible with man is possible with God. He, he can do it. You know, our big problem is, we're, we're looking to the things of this earth more than we're looking to the things of God. When your heart's right with God, God will take care of you. People, and here's another thing that, I, that, that kind of aggravates me. You take somebody that's really lived a godly life, and then and they pass. They were all oh, poor old whatever, you know, I, they've died. They're in a lot better shape than we are. You know, I don't feel sorry for them. I, I envy them, if you want to know the truth. Because... You know, when when we, if we die in Christ, when we leave this place, the Bible tells us there will never be no more sorrows and there will never be no more pain. You know, it'll be joy and peace forevermore. It, it will be what we are looking for down here. We'll get it there. But, yeah, you've got to be in Christ. You've got to be ready. You, you've got to be following the words of this book. That's not a, that is not a popular thing to preach today. You, you know, nobody wants anybody else to tell them what to do. We, we have got, I guess this is probably the most rebellious generation that has ever been scripturally wise. Because, hmm. We, we, we don't want to say, if you, religion always tells people, well, you accept Christ as your Savior. And that's not what the Bible teaches. It says that you accept Jesus Christ as Lord, and the word Lord means a controller, somebody that, that leads and somebody guides you. We've got, and that's, that's the reason why uh, we've got all this confusion that we've got. You know, if you have a good leader, everybody is doing what the leader says. But here we are. We've got this and over here believes this and this and over here believes that and we do this and we do that. No, we need to, Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Well, and, that, and that's not very popular in today's world. Verse 40 says, but Philip was found at his order and passed through to, uh, he preached in all the cities of Caesarea. Now, now Philip was a deacon. You know, we, we read where he was. Do you find the deacons doing much in the day's church? About, I, I mean, in some of the local churches that I've been around in, about all I've ever seen them do is serve communion. You don't hear, you don't hear a, a minister. The deacons back that we're that we're studying about, they they ministered, they ministered to people, they they preached the word of God, you know. They didn't they didn't they didn't wait on the tables like that they were supposed to. You don't find that they got out and went went to work, and that's what we need to be doing today. We've all been called into a position, whatever. We need to be into that. You know, 
because it takes it takes every one of us to make a, a church go. Yeah. We've got this idea, well, that's what we pay the pastor for. No. The pastor's duty is to proclaim the word. Now, it, he's not to be the one to, to do all the other things. Anybody got any questions or comments on the eighth chapter? We'll get we'll get one a verse or two here out of out of uh, chapter nine. It said, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. This is a good lesson for this community right here, Saul. Saul was doing exactly what he thought he ought to be doing. You can you can be doing what you think is exactly what needs to be done, but you can be exactly wrong. You know. I've got several scriptures I want to read you here. Second Timothy one and three. Second Timothy one and three. I'll get there. It says this, this is Paul speaking. He says, I thank God for whom I serve from my forefathers with a pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. Saul always believed in God. He always thought he was doing what God wanted him to do. Philippians 3, 4, and 6. He said, "Though I might have, though I might also have confidence in flesh, if any other man thinketh that he has whereof he might trust, I in the flesh I more circumcised the eighth day in the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, touching the righteousness which is." In the law, blameless. See, he he thought that he was doing the very right thing. We've got people today in this community that are preaching and teaching things, not scripturally at all, but according to tradition. I'll go to John sixteen one and three. Now, this is Jesus speaking here. He said, These things have I spoken unto you that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will I, they will do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. This was exactly what was happening right here in this, in this situation. Saul, I believe, he really thought he knew God, but he didn't know God. He knew the Jewish ways. He was under the he was under the direction of the Sanhedrin court, you know. And, and and as I said a while ago, he was doing what tradition told him to do. And and people are doing the same thing today. Jesus said, you know, in, in one place. He said, you make the word of God of none effect by your tradition. And that's what's happening today with a lot of people. Well, my grandpa believed this, and so I believe it that way. Get into the word of God and, uh, and study it for yourself. He'll teach you what you need to know. First Timothy 1, 12 and 13. Time drifts, so... First Timothy 1, 12 and 13. He said, And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for the, he counted me to be faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, an injurious, but I attained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. See, he was doing these things that he thought was right, 
persecuting the, the people of, of, it's called the way at this point. In other words, the people that believed in Jesus, but he, he finally admitted, I did it ignorant. And it is so hard to get somebody out of a religious spirit. It's almost impossible. Once a religious spirit gets hold of a person, they'll, they're like a man told Ronnie Owens one time. He said, I'd rather die and go to hell if you can. I mean, religion is that important to some people. You know. Well, our time's up for the day. We'll, God willing, we'll pick up here with the ninth chapter again next week. Mm-hmm.